Scientists have discovered the true ferocity of a huge volcanic eruption off the coast of Tonga in January. Imagine setting up camp in anticipation of exploring a buried river, only to be greeted by a record-shattering explosion of a volcano thousands of kilometers away. That's exactly what happened to the team of researchers camping near the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano in Tonga. When the ground began to rumble, little did they know they were witnessing the start of a geological phenomenon of epic proportions, the eruption of the world's biggest underwater volcano and its cataclysmic after-effects. Join us to learn about the largest underwater volcano that is about to crack open Earth. Tonga, a Polynesian nation comprising over 170 islands in the South Pacific, is inhabited by approximately 100,000 people. This remote archipelago is approximately 500 miles east of Fiji and 1,500 miles from New Zealand. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano is located in the western South Pacific Ocean and consists of two small islands and shallow reefs surrounding a larger submarine structure. It is part of the Tonga Kermadec volcanic arc, formed due to the subduction of the Pacific Plate beneath the Indo Australian Plate. The capital city of Tonga, Nuku'alofa, is 65 kilometers south on the island of Tonga Tapu while New Zealand and Australia are 2,000 kilometers south and over 3,000 kilometers southwest, respectively. The volcano has experienced several explosions in the past, including ones in 1912, 1937, and 1988. In 2009, a brief eruption led to an increase in land area at Hungaha Pai. From December 2014 through January 2015, Further eruptive activity caused the islands to merge and form the combined Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai Island. Major explosions and eruption plumes were observed in late December 2021, which altered the central part of the island. However, more vigorous activity on January 14, 2022, removed most of the material from the 2014 and 2015 eruptions. The following day, an even bigger eruption occurred generating a plume that reached an altitude of at least 20 kilometers and causing a tsunami across the Pacific Ocean. Shock waves were also felt through the atmosphere. Only a tiny portion of the islands remained visible above the ocean's surface. Satellite images from 1 to the 13th of January 2022 indicate very little volcanic activity on 1st and the 2nd of January. However, on January 2nd, a natural color image from Sentinel-2 revealed that the water west of the volcano had turned green-yellow and white gas and steam emissions were moving towards the northeast on the southwestern end of the westernmost island. Pumice rafts, about 10 meters wide, were also seen in the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery, drifting approximately 100 kilometers west of the volcano. As of the 2nd of January 2022, the island's surface area had increased from about 2 square kilometers on the 10th of December 2021 to 3.6 square kilometers. The vent was estimated to be at an elevation of 90 meters, and the active cone's base had expanded from 500 to 1,700 meters wide. On the 3rd of January, TGS reported the detection of a small ash plume that rose to an altitude of 6 to 7 kilometers and drifted northeast for 5 to 10 kilometers. TGS, short for the Geological Society of London, is the world's oldest and most prominent geological society. The plume decreased in altitude to 5 kilometers by the night. Views of the volcano were obscured by a passing cyclone from the 3rd to the 4th of January. On January 5th, another minor ash plume was detected that rose to an altitude of 8 kilometers and drifted northeast for 15 kilometers before drifting further to the east. On the same day, pumice was found on the northwestern beaches of Tongatapu Island, and a sulfurous odor was reported on the Nuku'alofa waterfront on the 6th of January. On January 14th, 
a sub-aerial eruption created a mushroom-shaped gas, steam, and ash plume. The plume had a width of 5 kilometers at the base and rose to an 18 to 20 kilometers altitude in the stratosphere. According to TGS, the plume expanded radially to a 240 to 260 kilometers diameter and covered Tongatapu, Iwa, Ha'apai, and Vava'u. Geologists on a boat observed Sertsian pulses ejecting dark, dense material into the air and pyroclastic flows expanding over the ocean. Analysis of a Planet Lab's satellite image acquired on January 15th showed that the eruption removed approximately one-third of the island that had been enlarged over the previous weeks. An abnormal swirling of water off the coast of Nuku'alofa prompted a national tsunami warning, as reported by Matangitonga News. The Tonga Meteorological Services also issued tsunami warnings for other areas, including Otumuamua in Ha'apai, Nomuka, Mango, Fonoifua, Atata, Ueki, and Tongatapu, Moyua. Fluctuating tsunami waves were observed throughout the day off the coast of Tongatapu, with waves reaching 200 meters inland and rising to 15 meters in elevation on Good Samaritan Beach. The Nuku'alofa tidal gauge recorded the highest tsunami wave of 30 centimeters. On the 14th of January, the eruption continued for over 12 hours, with the plume reaching an altitude of 20 kilometers, according to Himawari 8 AHI satellite imagery captured. Ashfall was reported on the Mango and Fonoi Islands of Ha'apai, which are 75 kilometers between the northeast and east. Based on satellite data, the eruption plume also contained an estimated sulfur dioxide mass of 50 kilotons, resulting in the smell of sulfur being reported over Tongatapu, Ha'apai, and Iwa. Ashfall was reported on many islands, including Fonoi and Mango. All domestic flights in Tonga were canceled on the 15th of January. The altitude of the plume had decreased to 18 kilometers. The Global Lightning Detection Network's ground-based network detected 191,309 lightning events from the 14th of January through the 15th of January, up to 30,000 events per hour. According to the Wellington Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers, there was an intermittent eruption, with plumes rising to an altitude of 14 kilometers. However, the Nuku Alofa tidal gauge recorded waves that were less than 10 centimeters high through 1,000 centimeters on the 15th of January, which led to the National Tsunami Warning Center canceling the marine tsunami warning for Tongatapu, Ha'apai, and southern Tonga. Satellite images showed an ash plume rising to 14 centimeters altitude on the 15th of January that drifted downwind to the east from the volcano due to an eruption lasting 10 to 15 minutes. Later on the 15th of January, an enormous submarine eruption occurred from vents just below the ocean's surface, generating an eruption plume of gas, steam, and some ash. The Wellington Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers reported that the plume had risen to 15.2 kilometers altitude by night and was at least 600 kilometers in diameter, as seen in satellite images. Residents in Nuku'alofa reported hearing multiple loud booms and seeing a sizable expanding eruption plume that eventually covered all the Tongan Islands. This eruptive activity lasted eight minutes. On the 15th of January, ashfall began and continued for approximately 10 hours, eventually reaching a thickness of several centimeters. This caused problems for some residents who reported difficulty breathing due to the ash in the air. Water tanks were also affected. The eruption resulted in a communication blackout throughout the country, damaging both the underwater fiber optic cable, providing internet access, and satellite terminals covered in ash. On the 15th of January, the GLD 360 network recorded almost 400,000 lightning events in the plume, with 200,000 occurring within just an hour. The plume continued to rise to a minimum of 20 kilometers altitude, although other satellite data suggests that some may have reached as high as 30 kilometers. On the 6th of January, the plume was at a height of 19.2 kilometers. As per the volcanic ash advisories issued by the Wellington Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers and later by the Darwin Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers, 
The horizontal range of the plume increased from 18,000 square kilometers on the 15th to 12 million square kilometers on the 19th of January. Moving westward over Australia, the plume narrowed and lengthened along an east-to-west axis. According to data from the Sentinel 5P satellite's Tropomi instrument, a sulfur dioxide plume weighing approximately 50 kilotons was detected on the 14th of January, followed by 420 kilotons drifting westward on the 16th of January, and another 400 kilotons continuing to drift westward on the 17th of January. The explosions generated multiple pressure waves, causing ripples in the surrounding weather clouds at a speed of 300 meters per second. The most massive explosion produced a pressure wave that spread across the planet, resulting in a sonic boom that could be heard at great distances, including New Zealand, Samoa, Fiji, Vanuatu, Cook Islands, and Alaska. Weather instruments and infrasound globally detected the pressure wave as it traveled around the Earth and was re-recorded upon its return. Warnings were issued for the north and east coasts of New Zealand's North Island and the Chatham Islands due to the explosions. Overnight, multiple boats were destroyed in Tutukaka Marina in the far north. According to a Radio New Zealand article, more than 120 people were evacuated from the far north between 11 p.m. and midnight. Tsunami waves measuring 1.2 meters in height hit Nuku'alofa, causing flooding on coastal roads and properties. At Mango Island, the tsunami waves reached 500 meters inland and destroyed buildings and trees with a height of up to 12 meters, according to reports from the Tongan Navy. According to an official update from the Tongan government on January 20th, tsunami waves reached 15 meters high, affecting the west coasts of Tongatapu, Iwa and Ha'apai Islands, with a water depth of 1.5 meters in Kanokupalu village. Approximately 230,000 individuals in eight prefectures in Japan were advised to evacuate due to tsunami risk. The resulting waves disrupted train services and flights and damaged harbors and boats. In Kagoshima Prefecture's Komenado district of Amami Oshima Island, the waves reached 80 centimeters. In Anchorage, Alaska, the U.S. National Weather Service reported wave heights of 20 to 100 centimeters on Alaskan coastlines and 16 to 29 centimeters along the British Columbia coast. The tsunami warning was extended to the western coast of South Island by the morning of January 16th. Reports indicated that the tsunami affected the villages of Sopu, Kolomotua, Kolofou, Maufanga, and Patangata, particularly areas near Vuna Road. No new eruptive events were detected between January 16th and 31, 2022 after the substantial explosive eruption on January 15th. A satellite image taken on January 18th showed that most of the previously combined island had been destroyed, leaving only a tiny 200-meter-long part of the northeast island of Hunga Tonga and the 700-meter-long southwest island of Hunga Ha Pai visible above the ocean surface. Pumice rafts were visible to the southeast of Hunga Ha Pai. On January 19th, the aviation color code was lowered to green. According to the Darwin Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers, the plume drifted west at altitudes between 12.8 and 19.2 kilometers from January 19 to 22. The ash was diffuse and difficult to distinguish from meteorological clouds, although the sulfur dioxide signal was more potent. The leading edge of the plume reached the east coast of Africa on January 22. As the Darwin Volcanic Ash Advisory Centers noted, ash was no longer detectable by night. On January 15th, an explosion and subsequent tsunami caused three deaths and multiple injuries in Tonga. Aerial surveillance revealed extensive damage to buildings, villages, and vegetation, with modified coastlines and sediment-laden waters. Many homes on Mango Island were destroyed, leaving only a few tarpaulin shelters visible. Evacuations began on January 19th for Mango, Atata, and Fonoifua Island residents, with roughly 150 people relocated. Damage was also reported on Nomuka Island, with only two houses remaining on Fonoifua. Kanokupolu on the west side of Tongatapu was evacuated after dozens of houses were damaged, as were Kolomotua and Iwa. Atata Island suffered numerous building losses. 
around 62 survivors were evacuated from Mango Island to Tongatapu on January 22 via a Navy patrol boat. Radio New Zealand reported two deaths in Peru due to high tsunami waves. On the 21st of January, the government of Tonga issued a media release stating that the eruption had caused ashfall and tsunami waves across all the islands. In response, a relief flight from New Zealand brought telecommunication equipment while a repair vessel was dispatched to fix the damaged seafloor fiber optic cable. As a result of the disaster, domestic flights were suspended. Multiple earthquakes ranging from 4.5 to 5 on the moment magnitude scale were detected in the area surrounding the volcano after the eruption, at least until the 24th of January. However, the nature of these earthquake signals remains unknown. Researchers calculated that the eruption released energy equivalent to about 1,000 times more than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. The eruption involved five blasts, with the last one releasing energy equivalent to about 15 megatons of TNT, and was an ultra sertsian eruption. The event was unusual because a tremendous amount of water was involved, which caused a partial collapse of the caldera's northern rim. According to a recent study, the most recent volcanic eruption to cause significant atmospheric disturbances similar to those observed was Krakatau in 1883. This eruption was one of the most catastrophic in documented history. According to Robin Matoza, an associate professor in the Department of Earth Science at the University of California, Santa Barbara, the recent atmospheric wave event was unparalleled in the modern geophysical record. The research, published in the journal Science on May 12, 2022, indicated that the pressure pulse caused by the Tonga volcano was as strong as the 1883 Krakatau eruption and more than 10 times stronger than the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption. Matoza explained that the amplitude of a wave determines its strength, with higher amplitudes indicating greater power. The eruption at the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano was seven times stronger than the previous one on December 20, 2021. Craig Stevens, a physical oceanographer at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in Auckland, New Zealand, was working at the Larsen Ice Shelf, drilling under the ice to discover to study the newfound subsurface ecosystem. Little did they know, they were on the verge of not one but various discoveries. The scientists had established their base a few days before the extraordinary eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano in Tonga on January 15th. The eruption was so colossal that it generated pressure waves reverberating through the Earth's atmosphere, much like a bell. The team had stationed sensors on the surface of the ice, and these sensors captured comparable pressure waves that traveled through the underground chamber they were studying. The team was left in awe at the realization that they were witnessing the effects of a volcano that had erupted thousands of kilometers away. Stevens remarked, Seeing the effect of the Tongan volcano was quite remarkable. It is a reminder about just how connected our whole planet is. Their discovery and observation shine light upon the interconnectedness of our planet, and how even the most remote locations can be affected by events happening on the other side of the world. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano, located about 20 miles southeast of Fonwafau Island in Tonga, is submerged between two small islands and stands at a height of 6,500 feet from the ocean floor, with 328 feet visible above sea level. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.